Hello world, it's Angelot. I'm back here with part three to my D3.geo tutorial series. Uh, that's based off the slides I gave at Map Time. Shout out Map Time SF. Shout out Map Time HQ. Bring it to a city near you. Um, in the first video, I showed you a bunch of examples. In the second video, we went through some data and tore apart some existing code to figure it out. This video, we're gonna open a text editor and write the code for a map and take you through some slides. Before we start coding, I just wanted to address one thing. Some people ask me, you know, why do you put the music in the videos? Uh, it's distracting, blah, blah, blah. All I want to say to everybody is don't be a hater. Because, you know, this is just for fun. It's entertainment. It's really nerdy entertainment. But, uh, you know, I need the music to keep me on time, to not go off on too many tangents and, like, get lost in my own head. So this is for you. Uh, hope you enjoy. Let's get to the code. So let's go through some slides here. They're going to have a little bit of example code for us. And we're going to take that. Uh, we're going to put it into Sublime Text here. Have an empty file uh, empty file going. Going to make a folder here. It's called Map Time. Go into there. So that's where I'm going to work from. Now this slide here uh, takes you through what a lot of what we did in the last two videos, um, kind of breaks it down piece by piece, so we can, you know, see the loading of the data. We can see setting up of the projection. We can even play with the projection here in these examples. And um, you know, we got drawing the path, drawing the graticule, drawing points. We can even use the browser's geolocation to get our latitude and longitude and render that on the map here, that blue dot, and some links. So this being a web page, um, we can just look at the source, and we'll notice that you know we got D3 loaded, Topo JSON, so we'll need that too. And we can get those actually um, if we just go to the main examples. Let's load up this in a tab. Um, there is you know community gallery. I'm just gonna go to the Topo JSON gallery. I know off the top of my head that these have um, what I want, which is so here's the hosted version of this, right? So these blocks, they they don't download these files to their own server, but we're going to so that we can work on this on the train or on the plane or with a box um, in a box. So yeah, so we're gonna download this into our desktop and find our map time folder, save it there. You know, the JavaScript is just a text file. Um, let's see what else we need the topo JSON and we'll save that same place then we need the data right which as we see here is coming from data.world.json so let's, let's go back let's just put this on the URL because this is a relative thing and we should get to our JSON file got it all right, so now we have the files we need. And now we need to start filling out our HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and just you know, copy. This is like really standard. Um, wipe ahead. You know, maybe we'll put some styles in the top at some point. Uh, we'll have a body script where we'll put our, uh, our code. Let's end this body and close the HTML. We'll put an SVG. All right, now we have kind of the outlines. I'm gonna save this into my same folder with my desktop and my map time folder index.html. So that's saved. Now we want to be able to uh, look at this, right? And we can open it up like this. Look in the console. We type D3. Oh, we don't have D3. Uh, oh yeah, we didn't include it. But there is an HTML file. Let's put something in it so that we can uh, see that here. So we can do scripts source equals d3 dot uh, what is it d3 dot v3 dot min dot js. And you know, there's all this other stuff you can do. Type Java, you know, text, all that stuff. But whatever. Let's get this working. So I'm gonna open this. 
to the three. So put JSON available to me. All right. Uh, what else do we need? We need the data. So in our script here, we can take this, but it's just in the same folder, right? Our world 10 JSON is in the same folder as index.html. So they're next to each other, so we should be able to do this, right? Uh, let me open this back up. But what happened? Oh no, there's an XML HTTP request error. This is because of uh, security issues. The browser won't let you open uh, Ajax requests to files. Um, but what we can do is if you're on a Mac or if you're not on a Mac and you have Python installed, um, you can do Python dash m simple HTTP server. Oop, but that, I need to actually, sorry, into my map time folder, desktop map time. So here's my index.html, so I'm going to do that again, python minus m sim simple HTTP server. Now, when I go to localhost 8000, oh crap, that's not supposed to be there. There we go. So that was showing up because that's the finished product that I uh, tested with earlier. Um, and I had it running from localhost local port 8000. But here we're just logging the countries in the data. The d3.json call worked this time because we're loading it from a server. Um, you know, here we're logging these two things. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to remove those logs. Now I'm going to do everything else inside this JSON call because you notice that. Um, this is inside a callback, and that's because it's got to go fetch that data. That data's got to get downloaded. You know, if you're on a cell phone, you have no idea how long it's going to take. So this is called an asynchronous request, right? Um, so when we get the world, that's the data we want. We have to do it inside this function. If we try to access that outside this function, like just saying, like, oh, you know, let me SVG append my map or whatever, world, you know, that's not going to work um, because I would be out of that function scope. And in fact, like, that code would run before that request had time to get back. So we're going to do it all in here. If you're a more advanced JavaScript programmer, you can make functions and, and you know make this modular and, and do whatever. But for simplicity, we're going to do it in here. All right. So I'm going to do what I do best, which is look at examples, copy them, and, and get them to work for me. And then uh, hopefully learn a thing or two. So I'm going to set up my projections. And I'm just going to put that in here. This setup could actually be done outside of this up here, but like I said, for simplicity, I'm going to do it all in here. Uh, this time around, save that. We're not really using that projection, so nothing should change here, except for my logs went away. Um, I'm going to set up my path and append it to the SVG. Now this is cool, but we don't have an SVG, we need to make one, or we have an SVG here. Um, we're going to give it a class like my world, and I'm going to do d3.select.myworld. So I'm using uh, to see the class selector, I could also, since it's the only SVG on the page, just do um, SVG here, but uh, let's use a CSS selector, that's more like what you'll do in real life probably. Um, so I set up the path function, and here I'm setting up uh, drawing the actual path. And let me go ahead and switch this up to the datum countries. I'm going to use this format. Now when I refresh, I see my my world. All right. Let's draw the graticule. Um, you know we should make this green and, and style, but let's let's first draw the graticule and, and see what happens. Um, just paste this down here. This is like playing with Legos, right? Just, boom. Oh, I have purchased it. Oh, well. uh, let's refresh this. Now we get an all black globe. Okay, so this is because paths in SVG by default are filled in. So what we want to do is first notice that I um, 
made this Graticule path have CSS class Graticule, and the country is just uh, class the land. So I see this Graticule class here and this land class here. So I can use good old CSS to style the land, and let's say it will be green, and the uh, Graticule will make it fill the, um, let's just make the fill opacity zero. And then we'll make, uh, wait, let us see, the stroke black, I guess. And so now we have the, the land, the graticule. Let's make this gray, maybe reduce the stroke opacity. It's a little nicer. Um, the other thing is that they're layered sort of backwards, not how we want. So I'm going to do the Graticule. Oh, we don't need this path projection set up twice. So let me just append the land after I append the Graticule. And that layers them in the DOM in this order, which since the land is on top, uh, is at the bottom here, it gets rendered last and therefore is on top. All right, so now we have our little globe going. Let's draw a point on here. We get just an arbitrary point. Um, we just draw a circle. I'll draw it here. Save that. So we got a big, big ugly circle there. Um, let's give this a class. Oh, sorry, last point true. So we tell it to add the point class. Um, let's style points stroke thread fill opacity. I don't know, let's make it really small like that. We'll say fill white. Cool. So we got ourselves a little point. Let's quickly go over the um, geolocation code. This is pretty simple. I'm just gonna throw it in here. So what I'm doing is getting the current geolocation. Now this didn't show it because I already enabled this, but um, the first time you load the page with this code running in it, it will say, you know, Chrome would like to access your geolocation. Would you allow it? Um, then. Uh, you say yes, and this function will get called. Now, this only works in modern browsers, and you should really check for it, blah, 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 but we're just, you know, showing this off here. Um, so it's going to call back with this position. Now, if you look at what the position is defined as, it's this geoposition thing. So we have coordinates, we have a latitude and longitude, and that's what we need to draw on the map, right? You can see I'm over California here. So. We get the coordinates into this array. The longitude and latitude is the order that D3 expects it into our projection. The same one we use to, to draw our paths. And we append the circle at that point. Give it a bigger radius. Uh, let's also do dot class point. Uh, Should have passed me. Oh, there it is. Yeah. All right, so we got our um, our globe going. Now we'd like to be able to click and drag and, and make this work. So I'm I'm going to go back to the examples, and I think I, I showed this off in the first uh, video, but we're going to reference something. So in this Jason Davies section, he made this rotate the world plugin, so you can just you know grab grab anywhere and, and render it. He also shows the different kinds of rotation. And then, um, you know, this kind of explains everything. You can rotate different projections too. It also gives you zooming. All right, so I'm going to look at this here. So this is just the code. We're just going to save this into our folder as well. And in order to figure out how to use this, I'm going to view the source. 
and I'm going to search for d3.ga.zoom. Probably shows up a couple times. And this is actually, I'm going to pull this out in a second. So we'll, we'll check that out. First, let's just load d3.geo.zoom. Then we will go here to see how we use it. So what this is going to do is it's selecting all the foreground stuff and calling this and passing it in a zoom behavior. So what I'm going to do is structure this slightly different to be a little bit easier to read. Um, let's do it here. We're going to make a variable and set all this stuff to it. And now this might be familiar to you if you do other D3 things like D3.4s or um, even like the projection, right? When we set it up is like this, like you call this thing and set all these parameters on it. So we're calling the zoom behavior. We're passing in our projection because what it's going to do is going to modify our projection based on how we move our mouse and, and do that. I'm going to comment this out because it's not strictly necessary and you can play with uh, adding it to you know tweak the way the behavior works but for now let's just keep it simpler um, then when when the zoom tells us to redraw we are going to stop the mouse events that otherwise would happen um, and we're going to select all of our paths and we're going to redraw them with the path function now remember that with both our paths we drew them with the path function that same way so the path function depends on the projection. The projection will be different after we're done zooming, or every every time it, it redraws the zoom. Um, so the only thing we need to do is select all of the paths and call the zoom on it. Now, of course, this only works with selecting all the paths because the only paths we're doing right now are drawing these maps. Uh, the you know the two layers here. So yeah, it zooms around, or it zooms in and out. Alright, so the last thing we need to do is make those circles move too, right? Now what we can do is in our zoom code, our projection will be different. So we need to render these a little differently, right? What we can say is uh, we need to get the lat long for each of these. So we can structure this slightly different. We can say the datum here is long lat. And then here we can do uh, D, we'd say X, Y, D, zero. So I'm going to do that for CY as well. And we'll get the first one. So what we did here is we set the circle's data to be this uh, longitude latitude uh, point. And then for the XY, we're just going to call it XYV, right? Uh, sorry, this shouldn't be XY. This should just be projection. And remember, projection, we want to get it to this because if we can just keep the data the same and call the new projection function or update properly. So let's do the same thing here. Uh, data chords. Now let's make sure those points show up again. Yeah, there's the point. Uh, they still won't zoom because we need to select all the circles and then basically call this on them to have them reevaluate their CX and CY attributes based on the new projection. And there we go. So now they're also showing up behind the globe because we're not clipping that, but that's something for another day.
I think this is uh, pretty cool um, to get to this quickly. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself and uh, you know, go make yourself a map. Alright, peace.